By the way, for the best tasting, high quality meat and fish at an unbeatable price, go to butcherbox.com slash herd. They have salmon. I ate it Sunday night. That's what we had for dinner at our house. Butcherbox salmon. So good. That's such a good, smart company. Butcherbox.com slash H E R D. Uh, ribeyes. Uh, I'll be cooking those off in a couple of days. We had salmon. And it come, it's incredible how fresh it is. It's a good idea for a company. And now they sponsor us. Peter King is going to be showing up in about 15 minutes. Um, I've said before when it comes to the media, uh, people talk about the media having a bias. I don't worry about the fans having a bias. Fan is short for fanatic. I don't hold the, the fans to the same level that I do the media. Fans are crazy. That's what makes sports great. The crazier the fans, the goofier the fans, the more delusional the fans, the more myopic the fans. That's what they have in Europe with soccer. That's what they have in America with football. That's what they have in Canada with hockey. That's what makes sports great. We don't ask you, the fans, to be above bias and agendas. We get it. You are. But the media in my life has gotten more agenda-driven. Uh, it used to be you had newspapers, veteran reporters. Now you got bloggers. Half of them are just fans. I mean, you can't even, honestly, half the people who are in the media today, you couldn't give a press credential to a legitimate event. And what I've noticed is the bias, uh, I'm going to say this, against New England. Uh, America's most popular sport is the NFL. It's not even close. It's not even close. So more people are emotionally vested with football than ever. And they have legalized gambling in America, sports gambling. So now people are financially invested in games, just going to get worse. But here's a story that is getting no coverage. And it would get massive coverage if it happened in Foxborough. Tom Brady against Kansas City throughout the game, there was a laser. These are illegal if you did this to a pilot. It's a federal crime. He had these lasers being pointed at his face during the game. There's multiple videos. Now, it's not the end of the world, but can you imagine the media coverage if this happened to Patrick Mahomes in Foxborough? It would lead every network. It is literally not being covered. It is a non-story except our show. Nobody's talking about this. Proving once again the agenda and bias against New England. They have created such resentment because they've earned, they have the best coach, they have the best quarterback. I mean, ask yourself when you watch Kansas City. They eh, let's hold on. Let me, I mean, the Patriots have their, 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 their short list of Okay, so let's incidents. go. I'm glad, I'm glad you bring up Deflategate, which, by the way, with Blake Bortles or Ryan Tannehill would be a one-day story. And the other thing? Yes, they taped practice, which everybody does, but they came out. But they got caught. Well, everybody tapes. Every team tapes the other team during games. The Patriots went, why can't we tape the sidelines and match it with the plays, which you're not allowed to do, although it wasn't written down that it was illegal. But the <laughs> league said, we don't like that you're doing it because they were one step ahead. Deflate gate, it should be noted, the Patriots have been better and Brady's been, been better post deflate gate. So it became a two year. And at the end, it sounded like a witch hunt. Blake Bortles, that's a one-day story. Kirk Cousins, it's a one-day story. Ryan Tannehill, it's a one-day story. Teddy Bridgewater, it's non-story. So every Patriot story starts from an unhealthy place. They're guilty. New England's guilty. Do it. This story, if it was in Foxborough, and that was Patrick Mahomes, it would lead every single blog, newspaper, sports network. Nobody's talking about it. Now, I don't think it's the end of the world, and I don't blame the Kansas City Chiefs because it's just some random idiot person. I'm not blaming anybody here. It's just somebody with really, really, really bad judgment. But if it was reversed, it proves a point, is that every story with New England now comes, the starting point is they're guilty. You're 100% right. If this was the Patriots, it would be uh, Lasergate. It would be laser gate. It would have gate. It would be laser gate. It would be spy gate, deflate gate, and this would be laser gate. So we're getting to a point now that their superiority has created an agenda, a bias, and a resentment that's not even healthy anymore. That's not even fair. Again, when deflate gate came out, I was very critical of New England. And then I started noticing Brady was better post deflate gate new england's dynasty has been stronger post deflate gate it had zero to do with anything but lasted two years so it, it is interesting the media's bias by the way is not just in what they say it's in what they cover 
The media decides every day what story to cover. They suppress stories that make their side look bad. They elevate stories that make their opinion seem more valid. This would be a huge story if you reverse quarterbacks and reverse locations. Joy Taylor with the news. No, 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 no. no. Turn on the news. This is the Herdline News. Speaking of those Patriots, we talked a lot about the Patriots this offseason, a lot about their inner struggles, yes. Belichick, Brady, beef. It was a very non-Patriots year. It was. A lot of leaked stories, very unpatriot-like, but... Given the recent comments from Belichick and Brady, it sounds like it's all good in Foxborough. Right. Tom Brady spoke glowingly of his head coach after the AFC Championship game. And now Belichick is returning the favor by shutting down reports of any friction between the two. So some of these people, I don't know who they I've never met them, never talked to them. So, I mean, I'm not going to get into a bunch of, you know, gossip. We beat a good football team, and we were all ecstatic about it. And everybody played a role in it. And certainly Tom played a big role, and, you know, we've had a long and very productive relationship and felt good about it after a win like that. I, mean, you know I don't know how you could not. I'm very ecstatic about it. Uh, I'm not buying this. I, I do think that there were some issues. I yes. do think that Brady forced Jimmy G out of there and yes. there was some friction between yes. Kraft and Belichick so and Brady I. and they fixed it. Yep. And that's the, what I think. That's the, by the way, Joy, just like the Eagles with Foles, good teams fix it. Like the Pittsburgh Steelers have historically been a very well-run organization. A good team will fix the Antonio Brown situation. By the way, all these teams, as Joy point out, they all have tension. They all have friction. It's a bunch of young athletes making millions of dollars. And when I was 24, and if you pay me what Le'Veon Bell made at 24, I would be a mess. Okay, so tension is part of this game. The pressure. Uh, the You know, the, the physicality of it. Your careers are shorter in football than baseball, hockey, and basketball. The key is, how do you fix it? Right. Wentz Foles, they'll get Foles out of town. Somebody will overpay, they'll fix it. And this, sat down, Kraft, Brady, Belichick, fixed it, great season. It's possible. Speaking of Pittsburgh, Le'Veon Bell is on his way out of Pittsburgh, speaking of not fixing it. And he left them with a little advice and criticism yesterday. He left a comment under a Bleacher Report Instagram post yeah. that pointed out all the aggressive moves that the Rams made this year. And Bell said it was the right decision. Better than, quote unquote, saving for the future. He wrote, exactly what you're supposed to do. They did it right. And added the uh, fire emoji and the fist pump emoji. Forget trying to save for the future. You better go and try to win that leap right now when you can. And we talked about this last week that players were going to be rooting for the Rams because <laughs> this is the perfect uh, matchup for a completely pro player, pro playing player, yeah. pro uh, comfortable situations, elevations of players in the Rams and the complete opposite of a system. No name matters. Even Tom Brady takes less money in the Patriots. No, this, how ironic is this, Joy? Last week we predicted, we said players are going to be rooting for the Rams because if the Rams get to the, even if they don't win the Super Bowl, Philadelphia last year and the Rams this year were hyper-aggressive in free agency and trades. Now, remember, before Jimmy Johnson, nobody made trades in this league. Jimmy Johnson of the Cowboys was the first to go, I'll give you this, you give me six players. So that started it. But free agency is, people have been reticent to do free agency for years. It's, it's what the bad teams do. It's what the Dolphins do. It's what, you know what I mean? The Rams are going to, and I believe this, we said it last week, Joy, Free agency in the NFL is the one place they've always been way behind the NBA. This March, it, uh, it's it's going to be a different situation. It's going to be like an NBA free agency. There's, you know, because well, there's a lot of really high-profile big names, and there's some there's at least two Super Bowl quarterbacks who are going to be we're imagining on the market in yep. Foles and Flacco, and we yep. don't know what's going to happen with Eli Manning. Even if you think it's the end of the road oh. for Eli Manning. Still Eli Manning and won two Super Bowls. March is going to be, March has always been a good sports month. March and October are great months. March NFL free agency is a real thing this year. Yeah, not surprising that Le'Veon's on that. Finally, the ending of the AFC Championship game, Chiefs and Patriots, has many arguing over the overtime rules in the NFL. A lot of people are saying they should change the overtime format to allow both teams to get a shot on offense. Although the coin did not flip in his favor, Andy Reid is actually not in in that in that uh, group calling for a change for the format. I've sat in on a few of those meetings, and um, you know, I've they go back and forth. So it's what the league came up with, and 
Um, I, I mean, I support it. I, uh, I sure would have liked to have had another crack, though. You got to be a good coin flipper, and then you got to get off the field if you, you don't have the ball. I know that this is a big a big topic about, you know, not over... You were talking about not overreacting, and I'm with you on the pass interference. I mean, the games will take five hours if we add that. However, I do think you have to have this conversation about overtime, and not just because the Patriots won, just in general, because we had two overtime games. Right. Everything is so offensive heavy now. I think you have to do it. I understand defense is part of the game as well, but you can't change all the rules to favor the offense and change the catch rule, and you can't hit the receiver, and you can't touch the quarterback. And even if you break or braise the air in front of the quarterback's face, it's roughing the passer. You can't do all that and then not allow both offenses to have okay. the opportunity. In the but I'll argue overtime. this. 